This is the moon in 2077. You read that right. Now there is only half a moon left. And there are only two humans left on Earth at this time. 60 years ago, the Earth was invaded by an unknown civilization. The aliens smashed the moon. Without the moon's gravitational influence, the Earth changed rapidly and dramatically. Earthquakes destroyed all the cities in a matter of hours. And tsunamis swallowed up everything that was left. Then the aliens began to invade. Desperate for a solution, humankind finally resorted to the ultimate power, nuclear weapons. Although the aliens were successfully defeated, the Earth's environment was also severely polluted. The surviving humans had to leave the planet. The humans built the Tate Command Center in space. It is a space station that has been moved to Titan. Titan is the largest moon of Saturn. All humans will move here. But Titan is a planet with few resources. Earth is still the home of human logistics. Humans have built numerous hydroelectric towers on the ocean. By absorbing seawater and fusing it with nuclear energy, they will eventually create a new energy source to supply Titan. This is vital to humanity. After 60 years, all the humans have been evacuated. But the hydro towers still need to work. And there are still aliens left on Earth to prevent them from destroying these vital facilities. A large number of drones have been produced to protect them. Although these drones are very powerful, they often have problems with alien attacks. So Jack and Victoria were left to guard the planet. The two of them worked together as a team. Jack goes out on patrol daily in his flying machine, finding broken drones and fixing them. Victoria is Jack's communications officer. She is responsible for monitoring all situations and keeping Jack safe. Jack's number is 49. Both have had their memories wiped to keep them safe and focused on their work. And so they have been working for almost five years. In just two weeks, a new man would take over, and they could return to Titan. Jack was out on his usual patrol one day, but no sooner had he flown than Victoria noticed that two drones had broken, she immediately connected to the command center in space. After receiving orders from Tate HQ, Jack immediately went into action, he was the first to find the broken drone 166. After a quick inspection, Jack realized that 166 had been robbed of its power packs. After replacing the drones with new batteries, 166 was soon back in action. The aliens had shot down two drones in one day. This month they have already stolen a total of 10 energy packs. Lately, they've been getting even bolder. The aliens are ready to fight back from the dead. Because once the hydro towers have sucked up all the seawater, there will be nothing left on Earth but dust and radiation. The second drone has lost its radar signal. So Jack has to search the ground on his motorbike. This time he was lucky. Jack soon found the drone's location, but the signal was coming from a hole in the ground. At this point, Victoria warns him that Tate will lose his signal if he goes inside. But Jack eventually chose to go in. Following the sound of the beacon, he moved slowly forward. Soon, Jack found the source of the signal, but when he lifted the cloth, he realized that a signal transmitter was in front of him. Jack immediately realized that he had been ambushed. As he tries to evacuate, he accidentally steps on the trap. The trap then activated and dragged him deeper. The aliens were trying to capture him alive. Jack immediately shot the rope and broke it. When he got up, he was ready to fight. But in the darkness, there were flashes of figures. There were a lot of them. Jack saw this and decided to leave first. So he immediately made his way to the exit. He hooked up a rope and was ready to escape, not realizing that there were aliens outside. A shot broke Jack's rope. He fell to the ground with a heavy thud. He accidentally dropped his weapon. Now all he has left is a pistol. Just as Jack is desperate, the newly repaired drone 166 flies in. As it scanned the area, the drones opened fire. The aliens in the darkness were instantly killed and wounded. It turns out that Victoria was afraid that Jack would be in danger, so she asked Tate for a drone to protect him. This saved Jack's life. Back at the base, Jack was so moved that he made Victoria comfortable for the rest of the night. By the next morning, there was a huge explosion in the sky. Jack immediately flew his craft to check the situation. He found that a hydroelectric tower had been completely blown up. After analyzing the situation, he decided that the aliens had made the energy cartridge into a weapon. Just then, he suddenly detected an unknown signal. With Victoria's help, Jack quickly pinpointed the location of the signal. This was the abandoned Empire State Building. He soon found the source of the signal. It turns out that the aliens are using the building as an antenna. Victoria deciphered the signal and found that it was just a homing coordinate. The aliens were asking for support. So Jack cut the signal. 
He then patrolled around the edge of the radiation zone. After finding nothing out of the ordinary, Jack then switched off his beacon. He arrived at a place far away from the radiation. This was Jack's secret base. He built a cabin here. Unlike Victoria, who was determined to get to Titan, Jack was very attached to his former home. But before he can rest for a moment, there is a sudden bang in the sky. An unidentified ship slides into the sky. It has fallen to the coordinates where it was just now. Jack immediately rushes over to check the situation. Amidst a sea of fire, Jack arrives in his craft. He thought it was an alien craft. But on closer inspection, he saw that the craft was very old. It looked like a pre-war human craft. Jack immediately stepped out of the craft. After a search, he was shocked to find that it was full of human hibernation chambers. Jack then made his way to the interior of the ship. He also saw a woman who had haunted him. Jack's memory has been erased. But for years, he had the same dream every night. The dream was of Earth as it was before it was destroyed. Each time he went on a date with a woman at the Empire State Building. Although he couldn't remember who she was. But he could feel that she was very important to him. Jack had thought it was just a dream. But now the woman is there in front of him. Just as Jack was shocked, the drones on patrol arrived. But after a quick scan, they began to slaughter the humans in the dormant pods. Jack couldn't understand. How could a drone protecting humans turn around and attack them? Soon all the humans on the outside are killed. Just as the drones continue to fly toward the ship, Jack appeared just in time to block the entrance. The drones also recognized Jack as one of their own. They then left the area. Jack eventually managed to save the woman. He immediately took her back to the base and woke her up from her hibernation chamber. But when she woke up, she immediately called out Jack's name. When the woman's condition improves, he learns her name is Julia. Next, Victoria told Julia she had been asleep in the hibernation chamber for 60 years. So much has happened on Earth in that time. But as Julia learns everything, she doesn't explain where she came from. It was only when she saw Jack and Victoria holding hands that an inexplicably bitter smile appeared on her face. By the next day, Julia asked Jack to take her back to the crash site. She wanted to retrieve the recorder from above, so that she could find out what had happened to her ship after she had gone into hibernation, although it would be against Tate's rules to do so. But the anomaly with the drone last night, and Julia's origins, made him curious. After much deliberation, Jack agreed to Julia's request. They then set off immediately. Eventually, the pair managed to find the recorder, but before they could rejoice, the aliens surrounded the place. Jack was soon knocked unconscious. When Jack woke up again, he found himself tied to a chair. As the lights turn on around him, Jack realized that the aliens he had thought were all human. That's when their leader, Beach, tells Jack, there are no aliens on Earth. The real aliens are Tate. Humans lost the war 60 years ago. And the reason Beach is wearing a weird costume, because those were once protective devices. It can avoid drone scanning and detection, and drones have always slaughtered humans. And the reason they would guide the ship back to Earth was to obtain the nuclear reactor inside the ship. If you add the energy cartridges, they've collected. The power of the explosion is equivalent to a nuclear bomb. And they did it so they could blow up Tate. It turns out they've captured a drone, but the drone was using technology that was beyond Earth. They can't control it, and Jack was the drone's approved target. They wanted Jack to use his access to get the drone back to Tate with the reactor, and then blow it up from the inside. But Jack would never agree to that. Now that's all talk. Beach knew Jack wouldn't believe him. He told Jack to go to the radiation zone and see for himself. He would find out the truth. Then Beach let Jack and Julia go. The two of them went to the Empire State Building. Jack used the beacon to contact Victoria and asked her to send a craft to pick him up. It was at this point that Jack revealed his dream. To him surprise, Julia's eyes turned red when she heard it. She also told her story. Sixty years ago, NASA sent a team to Titan to survey the planet. But six weeks after they had lifted off, Titan suddenly appeared near Earth. NASA changed the mission and sent them out to investigate. Jack, Victoria, and Julia were all part of the team. Everyone was in hibernation at the time. But now Jack and Victoria have awakened early and are part of Tate's team. And the reason he keeps dreaming about Julia is that he and Julia were originally married. It was here that Jack had proposed to her. Jack listened to Julia's story and saw her remove the ring from her chest. Jack's mind slowly drifted back to the memories of the past. He also remembered the details of his proposal to Julia. The two of them finally embraced each other. At the same time, the flying machine that came to meet them arrived just in time. Victoria saw the two embracing each other. She burst into tears. Jack returned to base. 
He would take Victoria away with him, but now Jack had broken her heart. Victoria reported the situation to Tate straight away. She thought Tate was going to kill Julia. Instead, the drone that arrived killed Victoria first. It was going to wipe out everyone here. The drone was suddenly activated just as it was about to kill Jack. It turns out that Julia has used the weapon on the craft. That's when Tate reappeared. It tells Jack that the drone had a programming problem earlier in the day. It told Jack to take Julia to Tate. But Jack doesn't believe it now. He takes Julia and leaves the base. In the meantime, three drones have caught up with him. To avoid the drones, Jack flew his craft into the clouds. They flew through the clouds. Jack managed to avoid the lightning by anticipating the attack. But the drones behind him were not so lucky. Jack then drove the aircraft into a narrow valley. He soon managed to destroy two of the drones with his excellent piloting skills. The last drone then went on a suicide mission. The aircraft eventually crashed in the radiation zone. Luckily, they were all unharmed. But when Jack stepped out of the craft, he found that there was no radiation at all. Jack climbed up the hill to check the terrain. Just then, another craft arrived. Then a man came down from it and started to repair the drone. Jack immediately rushed to stop him. But as he got closer, he realized that the other man was his other self. Jack dropped the weapon of his own accord. At that moment, Juliet suddenly ran over to him. And memories began to appear in the other Jack's mind. Just as the other Jack froze, Jack instantly rushed forward. After a struggle, Jack finally strangled his opponent unconscious. But then Julia also fell to the ground. It turns out that in the melee just now, the bullet accidentally went off and hit her. Jack now had to go in search of medical equipment. After seeing the numbers on the flying machine, Jack instantly understood the truth. Jack was number 52, and his number was 49. So they must both be clones. And there should be many more clones like this. Tate's so-called radiation zone must have been a lie to prevent Jack from meeting him. Then Jack tied up 52 and returned to base 52 disguised as him. The layout was identical to that of base 49. Jack soon found the medical equipment, just as he was about to leave. He also saw Victoria number 52. He persuaded Victoria to leave with him, but she still refused. By the time Jack rejoined Julia, he finds that Jack number 52 has disappeared. But he didn't have time to worry about that now, and his priority was to heal Julia first. When Julia woke again, Jack took her to his secret base. This is when he tells Julia that he is not the real Jack. But Julia doesn't care that he's a clone. As long as their minds were the same, he was the Jack she loved. That night, the cot in the cabin shook all night too. The next day, they arrived at the human base together. They decided to help Beach fight back against Tate. And that's when Beach talked about the war 60 years ago. He had only been in the army for less than a year. After Tate appeared, it first shattered the moon, causing natural disasters to ravage the land. Then it sent thousands of unconscious jacks to slaughter humans. In the end, it tried to drain the earth of its energy with a water power tower. Beach found Jack because he had seen him use his body to block the drones to save Julia. Beach immediately realized that Jack was not a cold-hearted person. By this time, Jack had loaded the reactor with drones. He then sets a course back to Tate. Three drones suddenly came after them just as they were about to move. They immediately launched a frenzied attack on the base. The unsuspecting people were instantly killed and injured. Luckily, the drones were all destroyed by the crowd. But in the melee earlier, not only was Beach badly injured, but the drone carrying the reactor was also damaged. Hopes are dashed. That's when Julia comes up with a plan. Tate had asked Jack to send her to headquarters. Now it's a good idea to use it. Tate won't stop them from going in if they use this as an excuse. Looking at Julia's determined eyes, Jack finally agreed. He then put the reactor into the hibernation chamber. Julia then lay down in it too. After ensuring Julia was asleep, Jack took the hibernation chamber and flew to Tate. At the same time, Jack turned on the recorder Julia had found earlier. The truth about what happened back then is finally revealed. 60 years ago, when the ship was approaching Tate, Commander Jack and Co-Captain Victoria were the first to be awakened. Victoria had always had a crush on Jack. They then discovered that Tate was trying to suck the whole ship in. It was so urgent that Jack had to disconnect the hibernation module. The hibernation module is set to re-enter Earth's orbit. Jack and Victoria are sucked into the Tate with the ship. As the recorder finished playing, Jack has also arrived at Tate's gate. After making his intentions clear, the craft makes its way inside the Tate without incident. But then, two drones appeared out of nowhere. It turned out that they had detected Jack's rapid breathing and heart rate. Jack tried to make up an excuse, 
but Tate could see that Jack was lying. Seeing that the other side only gave him the last five seconds, that's when Jack immediately said I want Julia to live. I want people to survive. This is all true of him. Jack also passed the test. Jack then went inside the Tate as well. Here he saw countless Petri dishes, and inside were all clones of him and Victoria. No time for Jack to be shocked. By now, the craft had arrived at Tate's control center. As soon as the ship landed, Jack launched the hibernation chamber. However, when he opened it, it was Beach who sat up from inside. It turned out that Julia had been taken to the lake house by Jack. Jack and Beach then pressed the switch together. Tate was instantly blown to pieces. Decades of alien invasion of Earth finally ends today. Julia woke up at that moment. She looked up at the bright fireworks in the sky and instantly understood everything. Time is fast approaching three years later, Julia had been living in the lake house. And now there was a little girl in the house. She was Julia and Jack's daughter. On this day, a group of people suddenly found the place too. And Jack number 52 was among them. He had regained all his memories. For three years, he had been searching for Julia. Julia was surprised and delighted to see that face again. The little girl has finally met her father. Remember to subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you next time.